car a year now. It's actually a little bit longer than that. I uh, just kind of got behind on making a video for it with my job got a little nutty this year. So uh, I've actually had the car for 15 or 16 months, so I'm about three months overdue for doing this video. But I thought it would be a, I wanted to finally get around to doing it, talk about what it's like to daily drive the car for a year. I've done a few things uh, with the car since I made my last video. Uh, got to take a great trip to Spring Mountain and do the Corvette Owner School, which I filmed some footage there. And I'm going to process those videos pretty soon and put those up. Uh, but this was the video that I wanted to get to most, just because uh, it's kind of way overdue. And these are the videos that people most likely want to hear. So I put about almost 30,000 miles on the car. Uh, at the end of my first year, it was about 28,000, 29,000. Um, about a thousand miles of that was a road trip I took, actually about 1,500. I took a road trip at the end of the year where I went to Southern California from Northern California. I went to Vegas, uh, I took my son there for a day or so. Then we went to uh, the Corvette Owner School, uh, did some theme park stuff in Southern California, and then took the Pacific Coast Highway home. It was a lot of fun. The car has been fantastic in a year. I had that one warranty issue with the stereo uh, that they went and fixed. I had the armrest thing that a few folks have had where it goes a little funny on you. I actually posted a video about that one. Uh, but other than that, the car's been fantastic. Uh, did do you, did replace the tires once. Uh, talked about that in an earlier video, but I've got the, the Michelin All Seasons here instead of the uh, stock Super Sports. Uh, they overall, I'm going to do a I'm going to do a separate video on those because a lot of people are curious about them. But overall, I really like them. They grip about 95% as well as the uh, Super Sports when it's dry, and during the rain, it's awesome. I'd be I, I don't know uh, how much better in the rain they are, but I, it doesn't slip and slide. It grips. I can actually get around it. I mean, I, I've uh, really pushed it when it's raining, probably more than I should, and uh, it's just fantastic. It's been, the tire's been a rock star. So yeah, I'm really happy with the car. Um, mileage hasn't been too bad. Uh, I probably could do better than I do. I think actually I behave myself pretty well. I've used eco mode as much as I can. If you recall from some of my last videos, or if you haven't seen them, my commute's about 80 miles a day, a little, a little further than that. Uh, that's both ways, 40 miles each way. So I use the eco mode quite a bit. Um, during the week, I end up getting about 24, 25 miles to the gallon, because I do try and behave myself. On the weekends, I usually kind of destroy that and get down to 14 or 15, which might be what most people are seeing with the car, with a lot of acceleration and shift in it way higher than I should, having fun with sport mode, that kind of thing. So on average, um, I'll go ahead and pull it up and we'll, we'll take a look at what that's at as soon as I'm done with the wheels. My general thoughts with the car on just what it's like to daily drive a car like this for a couple of years. Uh, you know, really, or not a couple of years, just in general, driving a car like this on a daily basis is a little different. Uh, most people think it's probably a little impractical. You may not have as much cargo room. You can't carry more than two people in the car. Um, is it a pain to sit in traffic in a manual uh, in the seven speed? You know, do you wish you had an automatic? Those kinds of questions are pretty common. And the answer is really no. Um, I found, you know, I commuted in a, a small uh, Accord for a while with a manual. It's that uh, right there, still over there. I uh, did that for actually a year before I started driving my Mustang. You can see some other videos of, because I kind of wanted to make sure that I was okay driving a manual every day. Um, and I am, I just, I found I missed it so much. I ended up getting rid of a perfectly good little small SUV when uh, my father gave me that one after he retired, because uh, it was his commuter car. I drove that for a year and I didn't mind the shifting at all. The seats were a little uncomfortable and there were some other issues, just an older car. Um, but that was when I kind of decided I wanted, I'm okay with that. I can. I can sit in traffic and it doesn't bother me. It drives some people, actually drives most people crazy, but uh, the juice is worth the squeeze on that one. I, uh, I'm definitely okay for when I get to a nicer place to drive, which is about half my commute. Half my commute stop and go, half of it is uh, some hilly uh, two lane country roads. So it's totally worth it. Yeah, I gotta sit in traffic, which isn't fun. But then the second half of my commute is all rural country roads. It's just so much fun in a vet or really any car. 
Uh, so yeah, I have not, not regretted it. I mean, yeah, I can only take one pe person in the car when uh, I got a lunch that I got to go to or something, but I just tell everybody at work, hey, I can take one person or I'm going with somebody else. You know, it's not really come up for work. I do occasionally have to drive clients. Um, it's only happened a couple of times. Most people are excited to see the car and it's not a big deal. Uh, it's definitely a point of conversation with people. Um, other than the Mustang, which was kind of a, uh, some people like it, some people don't. Everybody for the most part likes Corvettes. Um, I have found in the year and some odd months of ownership, you get a few people that are really into the stereotypes of the old man driving it or never drives it doesn't drive it in the rain you know it's an old man car that kind of thing but you know i kind of think a lot of it for lack i'm sorry to use an internet buzzword but just kind of people be haters you know I and mean, this is an amazing car i don't know why anybody could hate on it i mean you know sometimes some of the guys are really into porsches or stuff they feel like it's crap build quality or something and i test drove this thing i mean i cross shopped this car against a cayman that's about the price range when you're looking new. A Cayman and a Stingray are basically about the same. And yeah, the build quality was a little better in the Porsche, but performance and other things, this car just completely outclasses the Cayman. After a year, I'm definitely still happy with the color of the car going black. Um, I haven't gotten tired of it. Um, I don't mind cleaning it and wiping it down. I wipe the car down almost every day. Uh, I use a Griot Speed Shine and some of their microfiber towels. And then I wash it about once a week. Uh, in the summer, if I can get away with just cleaning dust off it, I'll just wipe it down with a like a no rinse solution or no uh, a waterless car wash kind of deal um, when it's just dust and that kind of things. Um, wheels are really actually the biggest pain because these things make so much brake dust. I have heard there's some lower dust ones out there for the car. Um, I think Trackhawk makes them. So when these brakes are going to be done, I'm going to go ahead and try those out. Um, I am thinking I'm going to stick with these tires again uh, when I need a new set. Um, overall, it's been a fantastic car to drive. I don't really run into any clearance problems. There's some places I've had an issue. I did scrape the bottom once going up a just a way too steep driveway. That was my own fault. Um, but for the most part, the car's kind of a rock star as a daily, every everyday kind of driver and i think a lot of that is because it's a stingray there's a grand sport and it had the aero packages and the bigger tires are a little more expensive um, i might not have as much clearance because of the skirts and the the front piece and some other issues with it um, the stingray even being cheaper i found it's just kind of a sweet spot but then i'm biased it's what i bought so of course i'm going to naturally probably like it um, you know really the only times i really think about replacing it or when i see something that kind of catches my eye because i definitely have a a grass is greener but the reality is i want to do it and not get rid of this car so i'm probably at least a few years away before i can get something else because this thing was kind of pricey um, but it's definitely worth every dollar it's uh, totally therapy when i get off of work if i have a rough day um, i just absolutely love it you know everyone wants to hear about the bad things and as much as i really love this car there are a few not great things about the car that i'm either willing to accept or don't bother me that much you know for one thing is actually something i talked about earlier which is uh, the attention the car gets. So it's, it's not like a crazy Ferrari or Lamborghini where everybody and their brother is going to stare at it. But you definitely get looks. Um, you get people commenting, um, you know, if you're at the gas station sometimes. Um, the thing that really surprised my wife actually about it is you get a decent amount of people up here at a stoplight where if I have the top off, which I take the top off constantly, pretty much if it's over about 50 degrees and nice outside, I'm gonna take the top off. I'll add a sweatshirt and I'll run the heated seats or something, but I love having the top off the car. People just wanna talk. So you always get people saying nice car or something, blah, blah, blah. You know, you get the, the few idiots. I think everybody who has a nice car has heard this, the wanna trade. I always like to tell them, yeah, I'll trade. You'll take the car payment, I'm happy to trade. You know, kind of usually shuts them up. Um, but for the most part, it's um, I, there aren't a ton of negatives about it. Um, it's a two-seater like I talk about. I've only had one problem where it was kind of a hassle. Um, actually, my biggest problem with it is I want to drive it so much, and I can't if my son's coming somewhere, which I'm pretty lucky in that my wife last year got a Camaro, so we can drive that, which is all, it's 95% as fun as this car, so it's really a, it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of other negatives with the car. You know, it does take premium, so premium's a little pricier. Um, the gas mileage is pretty good, but it's not amazing. I mean, for a 6.2 liter V8, it's amazing. You know, I'm gonna get out on average, you know, I'll, I'll pull it up in a little bit, like, you know, 20 something, I think 21 for the life of the car. Um, but that includes a lot of weekend fun, 
which balances out my pretty good mileage on the weekdays, which is kind of the experience I had with the Mustang. If you go back and watch one of my other videos, I got really great mileage when I was commuting, not so great when I was having fun on the weekends. Uh, so yeah, there really hasn't been a ton of negatives with the car. Um, absolutely love it. Definitely have to have the uh, obligatory uh, foam shot. take a look here at where I am with the mileage so you can see right now I'm at 34,000 but a year in I was more at like 29 or so but we still can take a look at what some of our averages are so the nice thing about the this dash is it has a lot of information in it so we can go through the trip meter so B is actually the whole length of the time I've had the car so I've had an average of 20 almost 21 miles per gallon which isn't too bad um, it sets instant oil life tie pressure so this is actually a good example of what I was talking about earlier so 400 kind of shows you what most of my commute was and this one shows you more like what I got last night on my way home which was a Friday and I kind of didn't behave myself so in the year and an 14 15 months I've used about 1600 gallons I almost am in a thousand hours on the engine which is kind of neat so yeah it's definitely an amazing car it's held up really well you know I haven't really had you know I've got a few little nicks a few things I mean my only real complaints on the interior of the car is as much as amazing as the interior is there still are some build quality issues I'm not crazy with how the buttons move I don't know if you can see that real well like you know it's just one of those things they do when they you know when you're doing a part it's cheaper to have a, a tolerance that's bigger so it allows for like the vendor that made this part they may not make it exactly within like a thousandth of an inch the size they can do it plus or minus one or two thousandths something like that i'm not sure what the tolerances are that's just an example and then this piece would mount on top of this one and they leave that tolerance in so if this piece is a little bit smaller it wiggles like that or it could just be the underlying structure isn't as stiff as as it should be but that's the kind of thing that you do find with corvettes and it's not the end of the world i, I can live with it but it definitely is a a thing um one of the interesting things was uh, this cup holder. Uh, Doug DeMiro did a whole video about the C7 Z06, but the C7 interior is pretty much the same. And he was freaking out about this piece of plastic that comes out. Except this plastic comes out so you can clean it. You can even see mine is dirty. So I'm gonna clean it and then put it back and it stays in just fine. It's just, just a cup holder, it's not a big deal. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, so this car has been absolutely fantastic have not had any issues really that make me regret it um 34 000 miles i'm sure i'll have the car for at least another year or two so i'm sure i'm going to keep doing these videos i'll check in maybe not every three months like i did the first year maybe every six months or so uh sorry it took me a little while to get this one made um, i'll definitely be a little quicker with the next one plus i've got some specific car content coming like about spring mountain the corvette owner school uh, and some other small items plus I really need to I don't know if you can see it from in here I really need to do a few videos about comparing the Camaro and the, the Corvette together because now that we've had that car my wife got it in August so that's like seven or eight months I've definitely and I've put a lot of miles on actually we did a road trip to Southern California in it uh, and I drove the whole way there and back so I, I've probably put a thousand fifteen hundred miles on that car so I definitely have a good idea of uh, the comparisons between the two. So I'll do that video pretty soon. So uh, watch for that one. But once again, thanks for the view. I appreciate it. And if you have any questions, you know, just put them in the comments below. I appreciate it. Likes and comments are always great or even dislikes. Appreciate the feedback. Thanks. Bye.